historically, the Phillies have had the worst bullpen in all of baseball's history. And last year was a highlight of that. And this year is a highlight of that. Last year, you had the Phillies go out there with Matt Klintak, and they brought in a guy like Workman, and they tried to rework the bullpen, tried to hit the reset button, realizing what a horrible problem it was for this Phillies team. They hit the reset button. They brought in guys like Workman. Guess what? Still sucked. This year, you bring in Archie Bradley. Guess what? Still sucks. All the things you're trying to do this bullpen, uh, Dave Dombrowski obviously was a guy that brought in Archie Bradley, and still this bullpen sucks. It's just one of those things you just feel snake bitten. And even when you might have a guy pitching well, Archie Bradley had a little stretch there before he got hurt where he was pitching well, you still feel like Joe Girardi is going to mismanage it, some, mismanage, it, mismanage it somehow. And I, I, have, I have told myself for a long time that I'm a baseball first guy. And the way that baseball has really pretty much been run as an organization, as, a, uh, as an entity, as a business, has pissed me off over the last couple of years more than anything, like even going back to the strike in 94. When I was a kid trying to enjoy 12 years old, trying to enjoy baseball, it has just been a joke. And the way this bullpen gets managed makes me feel like, man, I just can't wait for football season to roll around. And I never used to feel like that. I was always like the last guy holding out for baseball. And I wasn't, I was never one to hit the reset or the fast forward button to get through this little dead period with no football. I've never been one to hit that button, but man, I, I am all over that. I am freaking smacking that button right now. Because it just seems like a hopeless cause. It seems like a lost cause right now with the Phillies. Um, and Reese's comments the other day on Saturday after the Saturday loss only makes me bang my head against the wall more. Because he's going out there saying, hey, don't concentrate on the negative stuff. Don't concentrate on the bad stuff. Concentrate on the fact that Alec Bowman started hitting again. Concentrate on the fact uh, that, uh, that Bryce Harper got a hit. That uh, Andrew Knapp came back. Right? Concentrate on the good stuff. How can you? I'm reminded of uh, the, the great line from Jim Schwartz, former Eagles defensive coordinator. Reminded of this great line about uh, totally different circumstances. Nigel Bradley. Remember when he got caught with the God with the gun at the airport? Uh, and that was shortly thereafter uh, he had uh, punched the cabana boy. Remember that fun story? Yeah. Uh, well, Jim Schwartz came out and he said, you know, you do enough dumbass things and you get labeled a dumbass. Best way to not be called a dumbass is don't do dumb, dumbass things. Well, if you want us to focus on the positive, create a lot more positive things than negative things. Because even in a game where you played bad and uh, you might go through what I like to call the moral loss, there's no moral victories. Well, are there moral losses? Because it does feel like that from time to time. And a moral loss is where you still win the game, but it doesn't feel like it. There still it feels like you still highlighted more of the negative stuff. But um, at least those all end with, well, at least they won the ball game. It ends on a positive note. What's going to end on a positive note with this Phillies team? 21 blown saves. And you're four games under 500? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and concentrate on those, nah, on those blown saves. You cut those in half, you're talking about a first-place team. Just cut them in half, talking about a first-place team. Hell, take away a, a third of them, you're talking about a first-place team. This is unreal what the Phillies are going. Even by the atrocious Phillies bullpen standards, this is atrocious. So let's get to some of the things that these guys had to say. Uh, we're going to get, by the way, that a Sixers coming up in a minute here with some of the news that's broken over the last couple of days regarding a possible trade with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, okay. I'll just I'm going to address it simply because it's out there, and hopefully, me addressing it just makes it go away because it's the dumbest idea for a trade in the history of trade ideas. But anyway, uh, let's hear from, uh, first off, the guy who started this thing off yesterday, Spencer Howard, who pitched just two and a third yesterday. He allowed uh, uh, two runs uh, in his time out there. And Spencer Howard has kind of gotten spot starts, if you will. He hasn't exactly gotten the, uh, the, the equal opportunity to go out there. Like, for instance, he pitched, uh, he last pitched eight days ago. And it wasn't in the game that he started. Uh, he last started a game two weeks ago. And before that, he started a game 10 days prior to that. So it's kind of herky-jerky. And I say good for this guy in, in saying what he said. Here is Spencer Howard. Now, some of the post-game stuff wasn't available on the Phillies website as it normally is. So they're on the road. So uh, I went around the different media, and you'll see their names on here. So I give them credit. So I'm not stealing their material here. Here, uh, Dave Uram uh, from my old stopping grams, grand, uh, grounds there at WIP, uh, now of KYW, put this out there when uh, Spencer Howard was asked about 
the way he's being used in the Phillies pitching staff? I think any pitcher would want to get in games frequently, but um, I think there's still things that, I mean, I know I'm going to take and uh, build off of. So there's still, uh, there's still room for improvement. And um, yeah. That's about, that's how it ends, by the way. That's how it ends. Just lost for words. Uh, I, I'm sure any 24-year-old pitcher would want to be in a ball game as often as possible. I'm sure any 24-year-old pitcher that, by the way, was once looked at as, ah, this guy's the next you know, good arm in the rotation here, young up-and-coming arm. I'm sure any 24-year-old would want to be a consistent starter. Every five days, he's out there on the bump. Not the case for Spencer Howard. And when he's addressing the media, he's basically saying that same thing. It's like, dude, what do you want me to say here? Of course I want to be a starter every fifth day for this ball club. I don't want to be coming in out of the bullpen. Maybe. I don't want to be getting spot starts here and there when I'm only really needed to, to come out here and be a starter. This guy should be getting regular reps in the rotation. Like, what are you developing here? Like, Vince Velasquez has come around this year. Couldn't be happier to see that. But after that, uh, it's it's pretty much up for grabs. I mean, Eflin's out there. He's doing okay. You have Wheeler out there who's been dominant. Aaron Nola has been shaky throughout this season. You mean to tell me you can't get regular starts for Spencer Howard in this rotation? I understand that you want to bolster your bullpen, but maybe you should have bullpen arms do that, not a guy that you want to be a starter here long-term in Philadelphia. I give him every credit in the world for not just being like, hey, whatever I could do to help the ball club, that'd be great. And by the way, where do they have this poor bastard? I think any pitcher would want to. Is he in a closet? <laughs> Jeez, where are they doing these post-game press conferences? Ugh. Uh, Joe Girardi, uh, after the game, talked about how frustrated this loss was. This team has been pretty good about bouncing back, you know, the next day. But it's extremely frustrating. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat. It's really frustrating. That one's from John Clark, NBC Sports Philly. Uh, well, I'm glad you're frustrated, Joe. But what about the decision to uh, to go to Feliz there at the end of that game, or in the seventh inning, rather, uh, and taking Falter out? Yeah, well, obviously, I, I, I could have went to Hector, I guess. I, um was not using Archie tonight. He needed a day. Um, you know, I, I could have went to Brogdon. We liked Naftali against that group of guys, and it just didn't work out. Boy, I'd say 21 blown saves. Seven blown saves in your last six games. I, I, the thing that really sucks about when you have a bad bullpen, and we know really well here in Philly what that's like, obviously, as I've said many times already, the thing that's really bad about that is that you never feel like you're going to win. In every close game, even in games where you go out and you maybe get a, a couple of run lead, two run lead in this case, three run leads, four run leads, you just feel like, all right, get to the seventh or eighth inning. It's like when you know you have a team that collapses in the second half of games or a hockey team that collapses in the third period or a hockey team that can't play in overtime or a hockey team that sucks in a shootout. Like you just feel like it's always just a do like a looming cloud over your head. 